Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we're taking a look at Knock issue number two. So this is the second magazine or catalog collection of a bunch of OSR articles, mostly from the blogosphere. It's got some random tables in there. It's got some adventures. It's really a, a miscellany of interesting old school D&D stuff. Uh, I was generally pretty impressed with Knock issue number one. Um, we made all of these articles, which were just you know posted in very plain format on a blog into something much more luxurious and colorful and illustrated just because of the amount of work that was put into the design of this thing. Before we get into it though, this video is sponsored by Rain in Blood, a new 60 page adventure for the Mothership RPG, now on Kickstarter. Your players will have to deal with the vampiric warlord, Martin Rain, leader of the new Anglican Blood Pirates, a quasi-religious band of merciless reavers on the edge of space. Featuring a brand new Mothership skill tree, a bargain basement cyberware list, fantastic art, professionally voice acted monologues, and two whole adventures, the book is packed with new material for slotting into your sci-fi horror campaigns. Click on the link in the description below to check it out for yourself. So let's see what we get on the inside cover here. This cover pops off like so. And we can see that there is a whole setting on here. This is a micro setting for OD&D written in one day by Gabber Lux called Gloomy Wood. You've got some rumors of ill omen. You have random encounters over here. You fold it open and you have a whole hex crawl on the inside there. So all of the major hexes being described over here. Lots of different locations. You could probably get several sessions of gameplay or maybe even more out of this, especially if you flesh it out a little bit more. Every single aspect of it is being used. For example, the daily weather is over here on the inside spine. That looks like a lot of fun. All right. Start off with a forward and our table of contents. This whole thing is a good 225 pages long. So it is quite substantial. It's also very heavy. It has this thick magazine style uh, paper. Uh, print quality is really great. Colors really pop. It really stands out, especially among uh, OSR products. First article is Master's Words of Wisdom. This is by Arnold K. Arnold Kemp over at Goblin Punch. This is the DM advice that he has at the beginning of his recent adventure, Layer of the Lamb, which has been very highly praised, but I have not had a chance to take a look at that yet. Uh, so some of his stuff uh, includes uh, giving meaningful choices to the players, information and impact. Um, the three of these things um, seem like they are derived from Chris McDowell's work in Into the Odd, because he's always talking about choice, information, and impact. Uh, lethality, the game is deadly. Death should be fair, keep track of stuff, allow failure and allow success, allow players to pick their genre, never fudge the dice, better yet, roll them out in the open. For players, you want to think in terms of the dungeon level, learn everything that you can, be clever, Treat the NPCs like people, avoid combat, focus on the dungeon, and look for secrets. It's a really great primer if you haven't gotten into old school play before. Some cheap tricks by Chris McDowell. For example, uh, cheap horror tricks, keep things in shadow, cut things off mid-sentence, have an NPC massively overreact or underreact. A generator for knight errants. Playing dice with death. If your character dies and you want to generate a new one really quickly, you can play a little mini game here where you can roll dice and try and push your luck. If you push your luck just far enough, then you'll be able to start at level two or three or something like that with some special abilities. Push your luck too far and you'll start at level one without any of the fun stuff. Here's a great article by Ann Hunter, a landmark hidden secret, where it just talks about the way that you can, it's a framework for describing the different elements in a particular scene that you have, like in a dungeon room. So some things are landmarks, so they're really obvious and players should see them right away. Some things are hidden where they are not um, obvious, but you can find them without too much effort. You'll have to put a little bit of time into it perhaps. And then things that are secret. And then just by thinking about elements in your scenes with these three categories, you can um, give a little bit more structure to like what they can see, how long it's going to take them to find something, and when the players have to really put in the brain power to find a secret. Carousing for Spellbook Nerds, so this is by Gavin Norman. So this is carousing rules in the vein of Jeff Reint's Party Like It's 999 rules, where he came up with the idea of carousing for XP. So in this one, wizards don't carouse, they're wizards. Instead, you're going to want to do um, spell research or magic research. And by throwing a lot of money into that, you can gain XP. 
That's why you want to go out and get gold. But of course, there are complications whenever you do a lot of magical research, like you could accidentally summon something or other possibly positive things. Information on tombs, sorcerer corpse hazards, love this. Wizards have been exposing themselves to weird magical radiation for probably centuries, so their corpses are probably going to be hazardous to mess around with. A lot of art in here done by Gustave Doré, who is kind of a favorite in OSR uh, free art, but there's a lot of original art as well. Like this one's done by Letty Wilson. Strange things happen when you sleep in dungeons. Generally, when you're in a dungeon, you don't want to sleep there. You want to head back to town um, because weird stuff could start happening. You might be preternaturally tired. Um, you could start speaking in tongues, really freak out your companions. You could have crazy nightmares. Some goblin warlock spells. Searching the bookshelf. Find some weird books. Anatomy of a dungeon map. So this is a really uh, important article on dungeon design by Gavra Lux. Strongly recommend people check this one out, especially if you're designing a dungeon, in particular if it's a large dungeon. He just talks about um, structure overall by analyzing this huge map by Dyson Logo. So you can see how he breaks it down into this diagram over here, where you can see how the different um, sections of the map are interconnected, where all of these loops are. Things like dungeon highways, large roads that cut through most of the dungeon that deliver you to the main areas, but then you have to kind of branch off from there and explore the particulars. Uniquely undead, a whole bunch of ways to spice up your undead. D66 pointless items. These aren't really pointless items. These are my favorite kind of items. So stuff like a bottle of perfume, which gives one pump of any scent you imagine while holding it. That's great. Um, this is supposed to be a little bit disappointing for players, but the players that I know would love this stuff because you find weird ways to use it, which is what I am all about. Rival uh, adventuring parties, those are always fun. A new system for alignment, where there's eight different alignments based on these different triads. Empathetic, protective, and selfless would be the good triad. The bad triad would be callous, manipulative, and self-entitled. But there's mixes of these. So for example, if you're callous, um, but protective and selfless, then you are the reluctant hero, right? But if you have the whole dark triad down here, callous, manipulative, and self-entitled, then you are the gutter thief. You're just the worst person. Section by W.F. Smith on randomly generating weird gear instead of writing out big, long gear lists. Thief knacks to give your, your thieves little special abilities because oftentimes they can be a little plain uh, this is another important article by Arnold Kemp on what is tested. So when you're designing a dungeon, what are you testing in your players? In praise of vanilla fantasy. A section on some weird twists for goblins done by Paolo Greco. Lots of big random tables. So for example, the goblins might have flexible bones or feel no pain and don't understand it either or have no head at all. adding objectives to your combat, hit points everywhere. So this is kind of an extension of a rule that was come up by Runehammer, AKA Hanker and Fernail over on YouTube. And what it does is it says, when there's a problem, you can give it hit points. And then players can whittle down those hit points by making checks against it. So, but this would burn time. So that works out pretty well in an old school environment where time is an important resource. Five tips for horror in D&D. Uh, this is an example where the layout, I think, gets a little bit too crazy um, because it looks very cool when you stand, stand back and kind of stare at it, but it's not easy to read at all. So I think things went a little bit too far here. Generally, the, the layout is good and it makes each article seem uh, distinctive. Like it stands on its own. It makes it um, easily easy to find when you're flipping through it. I quite like it overall, but sometimes it goes a little too far. Um, this is a great one on swords. So if you have like a plus three sword, it's a little bit boring. So this proposes that as you discover more things about the sword, then it becomes more powerful. So if you just know that it's an Orichalcum sword, it's plus one. When you know that it's from Atlantis, it's plus two. When you know that it's from the king of Atlantis, now it's a plus three. Let's flip forward a little bit more. 
So you want to build a dungeon. This one's by Gus L, another dungeon essay. Where do you start? What do you think about? When is world building too much or when are you doing too much of that? How to make a powder keg. A good setting, I think, in D&D is a kind of a powder keg where you have lots of different factions that want different things so that when players get involved, they destabilize it and things start get, um, getting crazy. So that's always fun. So players feel like they're having a big impact on the setting. Some ideas for randomly generating ideas for spells, a little bit like what I did in, in uh, Maze Rats, um, but I like uh, random generators like this just, just because they give you fun ideas that you wouldn't have thought of on your own. So for example, if you rolled up the, the elements vision, thorn, earth, and ice, you could have winter's long reach. And it says, gaze about as far as you can, even to the horizon. At any point along the vista, at your will, the ground may split apart or simply be raised high. As uncountable sharp sp uh, spars of ice suddenly grow skyward up to the height of 10 meters. Great stuff. That's a good spell. 30 tomes of magic, breaking up the different types of magic into little categories. Or all the different standard spells from D&D &D anyway. Some cursed scriptures of petty gods. We've got different weird gods here. And the little scriptures that are attached to them. Good for world building, or if you want to make your clerics a little bit creepier. What are the spiders doing? What is that gelatinous cube doing? Let's see what it's doing. It's slowly crumbling a shrieker suspended inside itself. Or it's squeezing itself through an arrow slit. Complete the encounter. We've got some Mad Libs here. Make some encounters. Make some dungeons. I like this little dungeon map. Little rules for D6 hex crawling. Fixing spells. This one's by ZXCU on um, the problems with things like the detection spell or counter spell, which are very boring and aren't very physical, right? They're almost at like a meta level. Um, it doesn't affect the world in a concrete way. And I love it when people change spells so that they do that. And uh, that's what ZX doing here. Another fool for your adventures. So these are some fun little NPCs or PCs that you can just throw into the game when you need more of them. A portfolio of cartographic curiosities. A whole bunch of just fun uh, dungeon maps by different artists, all done in different styles, different layouts. Some of them are 3D, some are 2D. Great stuff, just so you can see the type of variety in terms of designing your own adventures. And some notes on them at the back here. A menagerie of monstrosities. We have a little bestiary here, the Flatterer. The Blade Warden, the Dream Crawler, and a whole bunch of demons um, written by James Malazuski with art by Jason Schultes, who did the Dungeon Dozen. And a retinue of rogues. So this is a whole bunch of new character classes. You want an Errant Friar or the Bad Brownie, the Gray, if you want to. Yep, it's an alien. Uh, d d at least really old d d um, was often a, kind of mixed with sci-fi. You could end up inside crashed UFOs and things like that. So it's fun to have the greys in there. Uh, the Plata person, the Otnagrag, and the beggar, the prophet of ruin, the plague doctor. And we start getting into some dungeons back here or some adventures. This one's another hex scroll, Fort Levant, a war-torn hex scroll for low-level adventures. All our hexes described there. The Dark Island, uh, done by Chris Tam, who's famous for his D100 tables on every single possible subject that you can imagine over at Elf Maids and Octopi. And the Rock King Sanctum, dungeon module for levels one through three. This one has a bit of a Merkborg uh, vibe to it. Maybe it's just the font. And there we go. We'll post at the back, take a short rest, and recover some health. Done by Sam Mamelli. Um, so this is knock issue number two. Um, if you liked it, knock issue number one, then you're going to like this one as well. Um, the way that it collects all of these important articles and puts them in one place makes them pretty, uh, makes them a little bit easier to find because so there's so many blogs and all these articles are scattered all over the place. Curation is always really nice. If you've been in the OSR for a long time, this can be a really nice way to have everything in one place. If you're just getting into it, it can also be a good way to kind of get a jump start on some of the ideas that have been swirling around for years. Before we go though, um, a shout out to some of my new patrons over on Patreon. 
including Louis Joseph Benoit, Kyle Knott, Nick Precisi Precioso, sorry if I messed your name up there, Stian Torreson, Joel Hines, Matthew Morris, Jenna, Simple Goblin, Andres L. Villano, Christopher Chieta, John Frederick Dupree, Zachary Taylor, Brian Molina, C. Walsh, and Craig Murray. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and keeping this whole enterprise going. And thank all of you for watching. I'll see you next time.